Good morning, everyone. It's super early in the morning. And I am thinking about you all so much. The last couple of days with um, it being the weekend but not being the weekend because every day is kind of weird because we're at home. Uh, just reminded me how um, happy I am to see all of you. And I really encourage you all to develop some interesting and new things that you do over the course of time while you're at home. And additionally, I would just say that this is something that um, in my lifetime, and I'm sure in your parents' lifetime as well, we've never experienced anything like this. And so think of ways that you can kind of document your feelings, um, how they change day to day, what the impact of being at home is on you, and write them down or do a video log or a blog or something. Um, yeah, it's important. All right, we are on chapter nine, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, and I realized, I read ahead a little bit last night. I realized that some of the, uh, the words that um, Roald Dahl uses to emphasize that hyperbole, maybe you're not the most kind. And so I may just censor a little bit, um, but not in a way that's um, restrictive so that you don't get the full gist. Um, for instance, I don't, I know Augustus Gloop is, is a large person, but I don't think that calling him a fat boy is very nice. Um, but that's the way that Mr. Roald Dahl, the author of this book, um, uh, describes him. So I don't know. Um, just know that as I read, everything should be taken with, um, the concept and the understanding that this story is written to emphasize bad characteristics as well as good characteristics. And to do so, there's strong language that's used. So if you take it in that sense, it's understandable. Okay. Chapter nine, Grandpa Joe takes a gamble. The next day when Charlie came home from school and went in to see his grandparents, he found that only Grandpa Joe was awake. The other three were all snoring loudly. Shh, whispered Grandpa Joe. And he beckoned Charlie to come closer. Charlie tiptoed over and stood beside the bed. The old man gave Charlie a sly grin, and then he started rummaging under his pillow with one hand. And when the hand came out again, there was an ancient leather purse clutched in the fingers. Under cover of the bedclothes, the old man opened the purse and tipped it upside down. Out fell a single silver sixpence. It's my secret hoard, he whispered. The others don't know I've got it, and now you and I are going to have one more fling at finding that last ticket. How about it, eh? But you'll have to help me. Are you sure you want to spend your money on that, Grandpa? Charlie whispered. Of course, I'm sure, spluttered the old man excitedly. Don't stand there arguing. I'm as keen as you are to find that ticket. Here, take the money and run down the street to the nearest shop. And by the first Wonka bar you see, and <laughs> bring it straight back to me and we'll open it together. Charlie took the little silver coin and slipped quickly out of the room. In five minutes, he was back. Have you got it? Whispered Grandpa Joe, his eyes shining with excitement. Charlie nodded and held out the bar of chocolate. Wonka's nutty crunch surprise, it said on the wrapper. Good, the old man whispered, sitting up in the bed and rubbing his hands. Now, come over here and sit close to me and we'll open it together. Are you ready? Yes, Charlie said. I'm ready. All right, you tear off the first bit. No, Charlie said. You paid for it. You do it all. The old man's fingers were trembling most terribly as they fumbled with the wrapper. We don't have a hope, really, he whispered. Mm, looks like we're joined. We have a guest. Come on, Miss Peepa Cass. Peepa Cass. Hi. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> All right, Nana. Ready? All right. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Are you going to go back to sleep? Mm -mm. No? You're going to stay awake? Okay. Daddy's in Abba Susie's room, if you want to go say hi to Daddy, okay? Okay. Okay. We don't have a hope, really, he whispered, giggling a bit. You know we don't have a hope, don't you? Yes, Charlie said. I know that. They looked at each other and both started giggling nervously. 
Mind you, said Grandpa Joe, there is just that tiny chance that it might be the one. Don't you agree? Yes, Charlie said, of course. Why don't you open it, Grandpa? All in good time, my boy, all in good time. Which end do you think I ought to open first? That corner, the one furthest from you. Just tear off a tiny bit, but not quite enough for us to see anything. Like that, said the old man. Yes, now a little bit more. You finish it, said Grandpa Joe. I'm too nervous. No, Grandpa, you must do it yourself. Oh, very well, then. Here goes. He tore off the wrapper. They both stared at what lay underneath. It was a bar of chocolate. Nothing more. All at once, they both saw the funny side of the whole thing. Mama, they burst. I have in my mouth. You have something in your mouth? Yeah. Oh. Oh. What is that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Funny, huh? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. And they both stared at what lay underneath. It was a bar of chocolate, nothing more. All at once, they both saw the funny side of the whole thing, and they burst into peals of laughter. What on earth's going on? cried Grandma Josephine, waking up suddenly. Nothing, said Grandpa Joe. You go on back to sleep. And that is the end of chapter 9. Chapter 10 is titled, The Family Begins to Starve. Should we read chapter 10? Yeah, okay. Let's keep going. During oh, the... these have a three, four, two, mm -hmm. three, four, five. I think that better be it for now. Um, chapter 10 is titled, The Family Begins to Starve. And uh, we will all read that tomorrow. So thinking about what we know so far, we know we have um, a little guy who is a really high level moral character and we have four little guys who are demonstrating characteristics that are maybe not that wonderful. So think about making some predictions about, um, will Charlie find the ticket? And how is Charlie's character different from the four characters of the other, um, the other children that uh, the author has shared with us? Okay, kiddos. Uh, I will see you tomorrow morning. I miss you all terribly, and I hope Mommy! you have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll see you really soon.